How's it going, Grey Boys? Believe it or not, I am still alive. Still in the middle of this move. Things are starting to settle down. And my office is almost completely put together. I went ahead and threw together my setup so that I could record a video because it's been so, so long. The last time that we played, it was our first game here at Eastern Michigan as the offensive coordinator, and we shut out SMU 20 to nothing. Uh, both of us considered some of the worst teams in the country, but apparently we are a little bit better. The headline says the D seems ready, and I would have to agree. Uh, hopefully that continues, although the next couple of games are certainly going to be difficult. Right off the bat, we have scouting to do, uh, and I guess a little bit of recruiting to do after that, and then we'll do a little bit more recruiting uh, at the start of week two, and then we'll play our game. So we got to scout some guys. I will probably take a bunch of guys off the board. Uh, I just accidentally offered a scholarship to Sean Muhammad, so we'll hope that he's good. And he's 64 overall. Well, that was uh, an accidental waste of 50 points, but uh, I'll just kind of jump through here and you'll see uh, some of the more interesting scouting things. And then I'll take guys off the board, add more guys. You know the drill. David Alston. <laughs> it's a bust. I was kind of hoping we would get a good quarterback, but that's not going to be the case here. That's a solid one. Mike Williams, the wide receiver, goes up to a 68 overall. That could be useful for us. And it's crazy just between seasons when you're a uh, top team versus a bottom team, how excited I get over overalls for players. Like this guy being 68 overall would never have a chance to make the roster at Coastal, but uh, you know, now we're kind of excited that maybe the chance of picking him up. Well, we've got Vince Young here. Uh, he's playing the center, so a little bit different, and he's only 63 overall. Uh, gosh, it's a shame that we couldn't just commit him and switch him over to quarterback. Ooh, another bust in another center. William Hill goes down to a 54. Scouting so far has not gone well, and the last guy on the board currently, oh my gosh, not a gem, but he goes up plus 10. Uh, and Jim Mayfield, the tackle, sitting at that 68. We definitely like that diamond in the rough there. I've removed a few players, mostly busts, and I've topped off our uh, board. So a couple more guys to scout, uh, mostly looking at cornerbacks here. Tony Allen, not a good chance of getting him, but he is pretty solid, pretty quick, decent coverage. He can... Oh, well, he's weak. He can't really tackle, but he knows what play's coming, so I'm more than fine with that. And Todd Pittman, an athlete, looks pretty solid. So now that our board is full, let's just go ahead and see. I'm fine with the 64 overall player, so we will certainly be giving some points there. Luke Clark, the kicker, is going to get some points. Uh, we'd love to commit that. And a 64 overall corner for sure for our initial points. And then we're going to take a little bit of time looking at some really, really good players to see if maybe we can sneak one of them away. It's very unlikely, but, you know, sometimes you never know what the other teams are going to do. So it's not always a terrible idea. It's also not always a great idea. But uh, if I do terrible scouting this season, it's just going to make our time here a little bit more difficult. So we've allocated our points for this week, and we can go ahead and advance towards week two. We do play Kansas, but unfortunately for us, they are ranked. So I'm really hoping that we can at least compete. But there's a chance this is just a blowout in the opposite direction of last week's game. Michigan and Georgia have already pulled in insta commits on two of the guys that we were looking at. Uh, which is honestly a bit of a shame. And uh, yeah, we were looking at those guys. So there's some of our points returned to us as well as some of the points from scouting other guys. We already know that we can't be too picky with guys that uh, are on our board. So we will go ahead and spend some points on offering scholarships to a few of these players that we were already interested in. And we already have Honestly, pretty decently sized leads with a lot of these players. So fantastic news for us there. And there's honestly nothing too crazy happening in recruiting this week. Uh, very interesting look here. Number 17, Kansas. They have not played so far this season. They are a B minus school, which is not necessarily all that much higher than ours. They're favored to win. Uh, they haven't played a game though. So we don't exactly know what to expect of them. 
And we're just going to hope that we can come in and once again just try to compete. That's the hope. And we'll see if we can come out on top. It's an 81 overall for the Jayhawks to our 77. They've got an 83 offense and an 80 defense. So they certainly do outclass us uh, in every way. We're just going to hope that we can do pretty solid and again just try to compete uh i'm gonna let kansas wear something interesting because we are making them go on the road uh and then we'll just kind of make it a colorway where we're wearing uh the the gray and green i think as we load into this game not a whole lot of information we can look at because they haven't played again our top player serge mitchell going to be a very big target for us in this one we need him to do well their top players up in that mid-90 overall range. Uh, Kansas surprisingly has some playmakers. We'll hope to shut them down, but we don't get to play the defense. So it's going to be up to our defensive coordinator to get us out of bad spots. And we're going to have to execute on offense. So here we are back at the factory. Hoping for the best. Uh, the great turf not here yet, but trust me, when it shows up, it'll be worth it. Uh, Jayhawks with the toss they'll go with heads and they are going to win it and it looks like we're going to start with the football again you guys are going to have to bear with me as i kind of learn how to effectively commentate with the quick sim so i guess we'll start with the kickoff uh no return we take the touchback and it's time for us to take over on offense very interesting colorway on this one Jayhawks probably confused why they're having to come play us, but we are hosting a top 20 team and we're going to give it off to Wagner and Jesse getting us five yards off the rip. Well, let's see uh, what Bird can do today. We are going to step back to pass. We got to test their defense. They're bringing a little bit of pressure, trying to wait for it. It's a terribly inaccurate pass from Ed there. Uh, Might have been intercepted if it was accurate, though. Quickly finding ourselves in a third down from the 30 yard line hopefully we can get this one done they are bringing a lot of pressure waiting waiting late to throw that one away the defensive end there should have picked it off and easily got the touchdown but he just bats it away so we're gonna have to punt this one away coach says he just wants us not to risk it good good decision there penalty against us kansas moving the ball very effectively so far as they are just running it a big pass for the first down as they are now inside the red zone in the Jayhawks. Can they make that push? Uh, no, it's a field goal. So again, not the best there. We take the touchback. And somehow the defense has been superb so far. As they only give up the field goal. And it gives us a chance to stay in this game so far. Ed Bird stepping back to throw once again. Go with the quick little slant route. And Serge Mitchell, the man of the team right now, is going to pick up the first first down. We need Surge to go off in every single game if we want to stand a chance. So we will probably be trying to rely on him more than is good for us. But uh, occasionally mixing in the runs, they're working out pretty well. Wagner got three on first down. And this one probably is not going to work. In fact, I've got an audible. They are showing so much pressure. We can just get one guy to break the coverage. This could be six as we're just going to throw it up. Ed Bird, does he have enough under it? Getting it to Nixon who catches it in stride, makes a man miss, and he's inside the five with a 58-yard reception. Absolutely phenomenal. Just really bad coverage from the defensive back, and somehow we come up with the first and goal. I'm definitely scared to run now, but oh man, Kansas looks like they're ready to stop the run. Who will come out on top of this one is we're just going to try to pound it up the middle and probably settle for the field goal if we can't get in. Second and goal going for the fullback dive this time. Defense not wanting to give anything, but unfortunately for them, Courtney Smith falls for it and he gets two yards. We're that much closer to the goal line. We might be about a yard and a half out, but we're going to give it to Ed Bird and let him go with the QB sneak. See if he can get in. Diving over the line into the end zone. Oh, they just couldn't stop him from going over the top. And we're going to take the lead as we are the first team into the end zone on this game. The extra point is not good so far. There it is. We take the penalty and then finally kick it through. Uh, they're going to return the ball. Incomplete pass. Uh, decent run. Third down. They don't convert. So we are going to get the ball here. Stadium starting to feel alive here as we have a chance to open up the lead now. 
They're not really bringing a whole lot of pressure. Maybe a pick, and yeah. Should have been able to know that that was going to be it. And just like that, our defense has been incredible, but the offense allows Kansas into the end zone as we throw our first interception of the game. Extra point is good, and surprisingly on special teams, we get a decent return as we go with the read option, giving it to Jesse Wagner and trying to get him some more running yards. A decent pickup on first down. Safety is definitely a little bit deeper at this stage in the game as we'll hand it off again, and the blocking is fantastic for Jesse as he's able to pick up 10 and move the chains. We are nearing the end of this first quarter. Back down three, but a good drive here could put us back in the lead. Looking for it. The running back may be open. Wagner can't come down with it. Awfully close to a pass interference, but great timing there. Thought for sure that was going to be a big pickup for us. Instead, it's an incompletion. Second and ten, handing it off to Simmons this time. And Jerome's going to go for five yards. And that's going to do it for our first quarter. Uh, I feel like we might have a chance so far as the uh, second quarter will be commencing shortly. Only down three, and the only reason they're in the end zone is because of our offensive play. Defense has been phenomenal. If we can just keep it up in this second quarter, we could be okay. Third and five to start this one, and over the middle. If it's a good pass, it'll be good. Wilson had it in his hands, but he dropped it. So it's a fourth down. We'll be forced to punt the ball away. And now it's time for Kansas to take off. Third and six. Got to convert this. And they don't do it. Our defense is phenomenal. And after a three and out from the Jayhawks, we take over again at the 30-yard line. So just, I don't know where it's coming from. We must have one of the best defensive minds in the country on our side. See what we can do with the play action on second down. Waiting for it, waiting for it. There it is over the middle. Ferguson comes down with it and does hold on through the contact as we get a first down. We'll be looking to the air once again as it's been pretty effective so far. Throwing the timing route, we find Serge Mitchell. And the best player on the team moves the chains once again for us. Starting to fly on this drive. The Eagles across midfield running the ball, picking up a nice block and cutting it as Jesse Wagner breaks the tackle for a couple more yards. This has been a phenomenal drive so far. I am seriously shocked at how good this team is. Edward keeping it on the read option. Just enough for us to get the first down. And again, we're going to step back to pass. Look at this. Serge Mitchell. Maybe a chance if Bird can find him in the end zone. Looking for it, looking for it. He's getting away from his man. A step on him and Mitchell. Oh, the ball's overthrown. It's a diving one-handed catch for another first and goal for this team. And we are having some real success with the deep ball today. I got to think that's a foolish mistake uh, on the coverage from Kansas. You can't have no sa deep safeties. Uh, if you're going up against uh, a goon-led offense. Simple as that. Courtney Smith, the fullback, gets us two yards on first and goal. And uh, maybe an Ed Bird QB sneak would have worked here, but we're going to give it to Jesse Wagner up. The middle of the running back easily goes in untouched, and we take our lead back midway through this second quarter. Extra point is good, and now it's going to be on Kansas to move, but it's a third down. They do convert with a big 13-yard pickup. Moving again, third and five, fourth and five. They're not able to do it, and we will have a minute and 59 to work with. Just does not feel like uh, Kansas is up to the task so far today. Stepping back to pass, throwing the timing route. We find Mitchell. If he breaks that tackle, it's a touchdown. Instead, he goes out of bounds for another first down. I'm not super worried about... How much time is left on the clock yet? Under two minutes, but uh, all of our timeouts, is that's probably our first bad run of the game. Going to try to hit him with the play action with a minute and a half. They're bringing pressure, though, so we got to get rid of it. And I hit A, expecting there to be an A receiver because I was panicking, and there was no A receiver. So we take the sack. Kansas takes the timeout with a minute and 28. We're going to try to do something here. Getting outside the pocket could be a mistake, but there it is open is Ferguson. We can't get the ball to him. Fourth and 17, Kansas with a chance to take the lead before halftime. Wait, no. Uh, I got to call the timeout here. Went into the hurry up. Certainly not the right play. Hopefully we don't need that timeout. So Kansas gets the ball with good field position. 
I don't really know what's going on there, uh, but things are moving. And just like that, it's fourth and six for Kansas. Sometimes this sim makes no sense to me. Well, that timeout really could come in handy. Uh, we must have punted it away because we got good field position after all of that, and we're going to have to see what we can do. Looking downfield, safety, not going with it. I'm throwing it up for the tight end. Bennett comes down with it through the contact. Oh, wow. 45 seconds. We got to go in the hurry up. There's a chance we could at the very least get in a field goal range. We got to keep moving the ball and try to stop the clock. We'll throw the short one. Give it to Broussard. And let him get out of bounds. No, they're saying he didn't get out of bounds. Oh, no. So the clock is moving down to 25 seconds. Because we really got to get these plays off. Somebody's going to be open here throwing it up. It's a bad one. Serge Mitchell comes down with it, though. Just jumped in front of the safety and got the catch. But the clock could still be running. Oh, no. Somebody's injured. I got to take the timeout. I think it might have been Mitchell, which is a real shame. Uh... I don't know if the game gives injury timeouts or not. There looks like they're going to bring some pressure. So what can we do to avoid that? Hoping for the best. Put Ferguson into a blocking pattern here and try to find the end zone. 19 seconds left. The pressure is coming. Throwing it up. Wilson's wide open. The tight end sneaks free into the corner of the end zone. And Zach Wilson gives us now a 10, hopefully 11 point lead. All of this just 16 seconds before the half. The extra point is good. Kansas gets the ball with seven seconds. Nothing happens, and halftime is apparently come and gone. I'm seriously really, really bad with this quicksand stuff, so we got to get to that head coaching job as quick as possible. Kansas gets a decent return to start the third quarter. I guess we're just going to jump into it. Decent first down. They pick up another second and five. Still moving the ball. Could they find the end zone? Just running all over, and no. We recover the fumble. The defense is absolutely phenomenal. Is this going to be a shocking victory if we can hold on? Or is it just going to be Kansas being overrated? I'm not sure. Jesse Wagner continuing to run really, really well, though. Honestly, we're almost to the point where I want to start burning the clock. Try to avoid any chance of Kansas getting the comeback. Wagner picks up a great block on the edge. He's going to get a little stiff arm. Jesus, well, and he's down inside the 25. Oh my goodness, this team is way better than I would have ever expected. I did just double check. We're still on Heisman with the sliders that we've been using this entire time, but it just seems like it's continuing to work as we throw the short little dump off for three yards on first down. Last play gets us inside the red zone. We'll see if we can continue to run well as the blocking is absolutely spectacular. You can't ask for anything more. Strange shoulder for Serge Mitchell, so he's out for the rest of the game, but we might not need him if our offensive line continues to play this well. They are not highly rated, but my goodness, they do a great job waiting for somebody to get open. A, maybe B, throwing it up, and we lose the 50-50 ball there. Thankfully not intercepted. That play just kind of fell apart. That's not a good running quarterback, so we had to either throw it up or throw it away. Lucky that we still have the ball. He's not a good running quarterback, but he's got us four yards, and we're now inside the five. It's third and goal. I got to say, the field goal to make it two scores would be nice, but the touchdown to make it three would be even better. We're going to try to run this one, and we're going to try to do everything that we can to get these four yards, handing it off to Simmons. He's got a convoy in front of him, and he is untouched. Jerome into the end zone and just like that it's 28 to 10 extra point is good Kansas starts their drive can they finally find the end zone on offense no it's fourth and six and we get the ball back with great field position is there something crazy with the sim that I am unaware of because we are just absolutely slaughtering these guys this one's probably picked off I thought I was throwing a surge, but I forgot that he's out for the game. So instead, we throw it towards Nixon. Ball's way underthrown, and there's interception number two of the game. You take away our two interceptions, and this is just another blowout. So it's a little bit interesting. Third and nine. Can they convert? No. It's incomplete, and again, the defense gets the stop. So finally, they give us bad field position. We're just going to run the ball on this one again, trying to follow our impeccable blocking. This is the best blocking that I've ever seen in this game.
Let's take a look at our offensive line because it's not good. Our starters are 76 overall, 78, 83, 76, and 80. But somehow we are just dominating. I really thought that Kansas was going to be a much more difficult opponent than SMU, but honestly, it almost feels easier as the blocking continues to hold up against the pressure. Let's continue to hope for the best here. Throwing another one up. Just trying not to throw interceptions. Even the pass blocking has been pretty dang good as we should have had Nixon, but we just couldn't quite get it there. 319 total yards of offense today. Ed Bird not having a great game. I think he's below 50% on the day with uh, a couple of interceptions. So he's not doing so hot, but our running game certainly is. Unfortunately, eight yards out from the first down. I think we are going to have to go to the air. Big pressure coming. Just got to get rid of it. Broussard. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. He took a hit. No way he's holding on to that ball and we'll have to kick it away. So the punt gives Kansas the ball back and they're going to be praying for anything. It's third and five just like that, though. They do get the first down. They get another big first down. What can they do? Another third down. They are just really struggling passing the ball. It's fourth and ten and... Well, they go for it, and it actually works out. Uh, inside the 15-yard line, we get the penalty against us, and there's the touchdown as they just run it three yards into the end zone. 28 to 16. Two-point conversion's no good, and we get the decent return. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to start the drive with the pass before we start running because we need to be burning the clock on this one. Obviously got to go to the check down there. Bennett. Unfortunately, goes out of bounds, stopping the clock, but he gets us eight yards to start off the drive. So now we're going to be in clock burning mode for the rest of this fourth quarter, handing it off up the middle. Jesse Wagner, absolutely unstoppable. This guy is trying to win a Heisman right now. 6.7 yards per carry for the starting running back. We'll see if he can have another one. Just trying to follow the blockers. He does it again, picking up more blocks and he is across midfield. This kid is just a block magnet. It's absurd. What can Simmons do to answer? Is he also going to be doing well? Yeah, and the blocking continues to be phenomenal. What on earth is going on today? Absolutely absurd. Got to throw in a play action here. We've been running the ball so effectively. Hoping for the best there. Somebody's got to be open. There's Wagner. The running back ball's a little bit behind it, but all the space in the world as he runs to the corner. He gets 14 more yards. This guy is incredible. Well, they should be expecting a pass. Ed Bird alone in the backfield on this one. Stepping back to throw. Finds Broussard. This time he holds on through the contact. Not quite the first down, but a second in inches for us. Got to feel bad for the Jayhawks. They get ranked to start the season at number 17 and then they come into our house and lose in kind of humiliating fashion if we're being honest. Bird with the good keeper. Every once in a while he throws one of those in. We just got to make sure we slide him down. And on first and goal now trying to burn out the clock. We'll hand it off and up the middle goes Simmons. And he's got a couple of yards for his effort. I can't say that I've I can't say that I'd blame them, but Kansas taking the timeout. They're technically two scores, so they're not out of this one yet, but Ed Bird's going to have something to say about that. This time taking the contact, and it's worth it because he's getting into the end zone and probably putting the dagger into the Jayhawks right there. 2.13 left in this game, and we go up 35-16. to 16. So what can Kansas do to answer back, if anything? Decent return. Pass thrown away, four-yard run by the quarterback. Pass incomplete, it's fourth and six. They've got to go for it, and we got to watch this one. Jayhawks with a minute and 42 on the clock, stepping back, looking to throw pressure to the quarterback, and he's going to take the sack, so a turnover on downs as our defense is absolutely unstoppable. Two timeouts left for the Jayhawks with only a minute and 38. A first down for sure will seal the deal and give us the victory. Wagner, his first carry for a loss in the game. But it's all fine with me. Looks like the Jayhawks are going to wave the white flags as well. No timeouts taken. As it looks like we're going to start the season 2-0 with a win over a top 20 team. Wagner, he loses one. 
and then goes and gets 15, 18 carries for 136 yards so far. This team is absolutely electric. Not at all what I think anybody would have expected when I said that we were coming to Eastern Michigan, but it's working out very, very well so far. And I think now for the second game in a row, we're going to be able to come out into the victory formation and take a knee to end this one. And man, there's not a whole lot of fans in our stadium yet, but the ones who did show up were here for a treat because that is an absolutely phenomenal win. A power five opponent, a top 20 opponent, and we come away with the win. Ed Bird gets the player of the game honors, but I think it's got to go to Jesse Wagner. Uh, that kid was absolutely unstoppable in the running game. And really credit to our offensive line for picking up those blocks. So at the end of our second game, the end of our second week, we come out 2-0. Could we make a big push? Is our presence as an offensive coordinator enough? And can the defense continue to dominate? We come out of our first home game of the season looking absolutely fantastic. Scoring in every quarter is nice, 35 to 16 at the end of the day. Uh, and my interception gave them seven of those points. So we, realistically, we should have held them uh, to below 10. 19 first downs for us, 176 rushing and 240 passing yards. Won the turnover or won the time of possession battle, lost the turnover battle. We held them, uh, apparently, our defense, 111 rushing yards isn't great, but 67 passing yards, just not allowing them to run. Ed Bird again, offensive player of the game, uh, 14 to 24 for 240 yards, uh, seven carries, three total touchdowns, but he had those two interceptions, including the pick six. So got to give it to Jesse Wagner in my mind. Chris Banks, our defensive tackle, had the force fumble and the fumble recovery to get that honor. Uh, absolutely deserved. So a good win for us there. And we'll go ahead and advance towards week three at NC State. Uh, and I think that this episode, because we had to catch up on recruiting from week one, uh, threw a little bit extra. So starting next episode, we are going to go with double ladders. Uh, that way, again, we can just get through this season and hopefully land that head coaching gig here with the Eagles, because I'm telling you, Eastern Michigan is going to be a powerhouse real soon. We get a bunch of XP really curious to know what our rank would be in fact we could probably check nc state as a quick preview though is also a b minus team so not that great although they are favored to win and they have actually won a game so far this season championship contenders we started the season at like 111th or something and we're up to 60th in the nation projected to be the worst in the nation the next three years but this year starting really really strong we can take a quick look here at the top 25. And good news is that Coastal Carolina is still doing well. Uh, they beat, I think it was Mississippi State week one. They beat a ranked Ole Miss this week. So that's great news. We left them and they're still doing well. Easy enough schedule so far with a, a bit of a harder back half of it. Hopefully they continue to do well. Oklahoma, Oregon, Tennessee, and Georgia round out the rest of the top five with West Virginia, Cal, Penn State, Wisconsin, and Clemson finishing out the top 10. Uh, a lot of teams moving around. USC just lost. Ohio State just lost. Uh, so did Ole Miss and Florida. So a lot of losses in this top 25, but uh, nothing too crazy. And as the season kind of gets further underway, uh, that's where we might see some really, really interesting results. Last thing we'll look at today is the Heisman watch. We don't have anything yet. I got to expect if Wagner keeps running the way he has so far, he might find his way up there. Brandon Brown, the running back for Tennessee, top of the Heisman watch list with Corey Wade, the senior quarterback from Clemson. Uh, in second, you got Joe Frank in third. John James, <laughs> that's a great name for a quarterback from Michigan in fourth and Jonathan Smith from Wisconsin there in fifth. Unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. If we continue to play this well, I am just going to lose my mind. I think our coaches have really done an excellent job at getting the best of the talent available on this roster. And I'm excited to see where it goes throughout this season. Eventually, we got to start losing, but 
If we can take on these Power 5 teams and get some wins, that is fine by me. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and you want to be notified when these new videos get posted, which hopefully is pretty soon since the move is almost over. After you've done those things, though, head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goodmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get that for yourself. All that being said, though, my name is Goonmaster. You guys are the great boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.